What's up, homeboys and homegirls? Uh, it's me, Dr. Josh, and I want to talk about something I hear a lot about that makes me so happy, but it's the idea of cool exercises. And cool exercises are typically exercises that are multi-point, super difficult, super complicated, performed upon Instagram, only on the highlight reels, and you never show how you got there, how you started, or when you dropped the freaking weight on your foot like a moron. So, what are cool exercises? I think cool exercises are a lot of exercises that are performed for their aesthetic appeal. They look awesome. So this might be like kettlebell juggling. If you can perform that well and, and uh, very succinctly, that's awesome. But I see a lot of people making idiots of themselves and dropping it. Um, any combination of multi-part burpees I think are typically performance art. I just don't see the functional effect. And I've had three now three collegiate golfers who the one thing that kept them from uh, resolving their wrist injury was repeated burpees in workouts. I just don't see the purpose of them. Although getting down on the ground and getting your body back up is difficult, I don't think it's necessarily good for people. Which brings, brings me to this point. Good exercises are ones that I think really make our clients better. And... Uh, I can't remember who said it first, but I'll give it to Rick Mayo. I think he was the one that said, it's really easy to make people tired. It's really difficult to make them better. And so I just challenge you, are you working on cool exercises or are you working on good exercises? And good are the ones that make our pa patients better. So here's the difference between the two. I have no problem with people doing very complicated, super aggressive, high level exercises. If they checked off a box that they screened the client that the, the client can perform that and that that's at the end of a progression, a logical progression of exercise. So what's the difference between cool exercises and good exercises? Well, good exercises typically start with something, some sort of checkbox like the FMS and then some sort of progression, which means asterisk, asterisk, you have an organizational method right so if you organize your exercises and still end up doing those cool exercises awesome those are also good exercises but if you're just throwing crap at your clients because of what you watched on Instagram you're a joke you need to go back to school and learn how to organize and progress if you don't have that you don't have anything I'm not trying to be rude here but I just hate when I see the exercises that people are assigned look awfully like what was on their Instagram scroll that day so when you see an exercise on Instagram, the best thing you can do is say, is this a good exercise? How do you do that? Organize it. For me, I use like the 10 buckets approach like Brendan Rierick talks about. Horizontal push, horizontal pull, vertical push, vertical pull, squat patterns, hip hinge patterns, single leg squat patterns, single leg hinge patterns, anti-rotation, anti-extension. Uh, I need to count those up, but I think that's it. Anyway, so once you have those 10 buckets, then you organize that cool exercise into whatever bucket or buckets it goes in and then you figure out where in the regression and progression it goes and bang you have a good exercise if you can't do that or if the only answer you have is it's cool bro i don't think you're doing your clients any service so if you have a cool exercise that you found is also a good exercise i'd love to see it post it below if you have a cool exercise that's not a good exercise you can describe it and make fun of your friends below as well we're all in this together and that's just my opinion but I think it's kind of educated and I certainly like my own opinion. I hope you do too. See ya.